Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In case you guys are new here, my name is Erin and I like to do all things crochet and fiber arts related. And if you guys are returners here, then you guys know that I love to do these kind of like monthly wrap ups of everything that I crocheted or created for that month. So welcome to my December wrap up. I do have a nice pretty stack of things here, but I figured today was just going to be another very casual talk through video. I'm feeling very lazy, I've got my pajamas on. Yeah, and it's raining outside, so I feel very cozy, very relaxed. But let's just go ahead and jump into some of the things that I made in the month of December. All right, so I actually only have two of these headbands to show you guys, but believe it or not, I think I ended up making like 10 headbands in the month of December because a lot of them were given away as a Christmas gift. But I've got two different styles of headbands here. But honestly, my favorite one by far is kind of like this twisted headband. So you've got a little bit of like this twist X in the very front of your headband. And then on the back side, you just have regular stitches. But this was actually a very simple tutorial that I put out just a few weeks ago. So if you guys wanna see it, I will link it somewhere up here. But let me just tell you guys about this yarn that I used. Oh my gosh, it is absolutely stunning. And for this headband, I did use the Universal Yarn Noel line. And as you guys can see here, there is a really gorgeous like metallic sheen inside that yarn. And if I can remember correctly, I'm pretty sure there is baby alpaca wool and acrylic mix in this yarn. It's absolutely stunning. And when I first got the yarn online, I thought that it was just going to be all this like magenta-y pink shade. And then it came, and hopefully you guys can see that there are a ton of different colors inside. There's kind of like a very light lilac, purples, magentas, and almost like this hot pink looking color down here. But when I worked up this headband, I think that it's absolutely stunning. I know I'm gonna look like a little geek when I throw it on. Ooh, actually, that's not too bad. This is like one of the first times I can actually pull off a headband, but like I was just explaining, there is a little bit of this like crisscross here in the front of this headband. So it kind of steps it up a notch. It makes it look a little bit more feminine, a little bit more girly. And even just like with my pajamas, this looks like a killer fit all of a sudden. Stop it, get some help. But yeah, as you guys can tell, I really love these headbands and they were so quick and easy for me to work up. I'm pretty sure I got one headband done in about 30 minutes, which is like nothing. So I spent one day making like five or six of these, just knocking a bunch of these out. And as you guys can imagine, there are so many different types of yarn and chunkiness and thickness that you can make other styles, which is what I did here with this headband. And for this headband, I used a completely different style of yarn. As you guys can see here, there is a lot of this like wooly mohair style to it. So it's very fluffy, very comfortable on your skin. And for this one, I kind of just wanted to pick out something that was a little bit more dual tone, kind of something you can wear with almost anything in your closet. So a black and white headband was the way to go. And really the only difference that I made with this headband is that as you guys can tell, I didn't add that little crisscross twist in the front of the headband. I just sewed it up like normal in the back so that the whole thing is just flat. And this kind of gives me like 80s workout headband vibes. Squeeze those cheeseburgers out of those hips. But I absolutely love this texture. I think this was called like angel hair, buttercream angel hair at Michael's and Joann's. So go check that out if you guys don't have it already. Very soft. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off now because I look like a damn fool. That is correct. Shorty. Oh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and jump over to this insane scarf that I made. So again, I'm gonna plug myself, but in case you guys haven't seen my last minute Christmas gift tutorial idea video, I did put that out about a week ago. And one of the items that I made in this Christmas gift ideas video was a super long but very basic scarf. And at this point, I'm pretty sure you guys have already guessed it, but yes, this entire scarf was made with scrap yarn. So you guys know I have been chipping away at my Red Heart Super Saver and Karen Simply Soft scrap yarn pile. And these were some of the colors that I had left over. So I just decided to use a bunch of treble crochets. So there are these very nice 
long stitches, a little bit longer than those double crochets, but I just chose to use treble crochets for the entire scarf just because I was making this last minute and I needed it to work up really quick and really fast. So this entire scarf was just made with a chain of 22 and then I worked 22 treble crochets across the entire thing. I was kind of just picking and choosing where I wanted one color to stop and start a new color. So I've got a beautiful gray here on the end and then a nice big fat chunk of red, some marigold yellow, coral pink, blue, black, olive green, and then like my favorite part is this Karen Simply Soft teal shade. I obviously loved it so much that I added like a ton of rose, and then a little bit of some other kind of teal, magentas, and a lilac. So once this whole bad boy was worked up, it looks I keep doing this to myself in my videos where I make myself look like an absolute clown. That is correct. But you know, just disregard the hair. This is what I'm working with. And this is kind of like the final scarf fit. And I'm actually really glad that I just chose to put a ton of color into this. I've been trying to start going to like a little bit more neutral colors just because it's winter, it's chillier, it's colder. I just want more like creams, whites, blacks, and grays. And then once I got started on this scarf, I just got carried away with that whole rainbow vibe that I've been on lately. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. But this thing is actually really long. There's so many different ways that you can tie up a scarf. I mean, what else can I say about it? It's a scarf. Yeah, this was definitely another highlight from December. And although I do love this scarf so much, I am thinking about listing this up on my website just because it definitely is like another one of a kind item. So yeah, keep your guys' eyes peeled. If you guys are interested in purchasing this scarf, let me know down in the comments or even just DM me. But yeah, super quick, super simple. I got this done in about three and a half hours. And in case you guys are still giving out gifts last minute, I still highly recommend making a handmade scarf. People freaking love handmade items. So make something valuable and one of a kind and gift it to somebody that you love. Okay, we're speeding right through it. Let's pick up. Ooh, these bad boys are freaking thick and chunky. So for those of you who have been tuning in lately to some of my December live streams here on YouTube, I was working up this beanie, I wanna say like three weeks ago. I was out of town for about a week. So once I got back a few days ago, I did just finish up this beanie and it's so freaking thick and chunky. I think this is like the perfect beanie for these cold winter months. I know my last beanie tutorial that I put out here on my channel was much more of like a lightweight spring autumn type of beanie. But now that it's raining and it's freaking overcast and chilly every single day, I did want a very durable, sturdy, and you guys guessed it for this beanie, I did use Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick. So if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure the Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn that I used was a number six chunky yarn. So you guys can see here, this bad boy, very thick. I can't even explain to you guys just how dense this hat is, but I think if all you have on is a sweater and some jeans, if you throw this beanie on over, you're gonna be pretty warm. It's gonna keep your whole head warm. I mean, again, it's a beanie. What else can I say about it? The only difference that I have with this beanie, you know what, let's just go ahead and throw it on. God, this is actually, so freaking cute and is actually so thick on my ears right now that I can't really hear anything. They're kind of like ear mufflers. Y'all, this is actually like the one head item that I've made here on my channel that I think actually looks really freaking cute on me. And I can't wait to start rocking this like later tonight or even tomorrow when I start going out of the house again. But in case you guys missed my announcement, I did turn this beanie into a tutorial. So I just finished filming this, I wanna say this morning. And now that it's all done, I can start editing it and hopefully get this updated chunky beanie tutorial out to you guys in a week or two. Are you sure about that? I like how I'm just sitting here chilling, filming in this beanie now, but I'm really excited to get this tutorial out to you guys because this is actually a tapered beanie pattern. So with that previous beanie tutorial, it's very square and basic. And when you loop the entire top of the hat together, it does have like a lot of floof and fabric atop your head. And honestly, for me, I don't like how I look when the beanie is too big and chunky and like oversized. So with this tutorial, I did aim to make a lot more fitted and tapered pattern. That way when the whole thing is sewn up, as you guys can see here, there's not a lot of like bulk on top of my head and it actually just frames the shape of my head a lot better instead of having like a bunch of you know, beanie fabric up top. 
Am I crazy? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm only a fan of beanies when they're a lot like more delicate looking and fitted like this one. So I'm really glad with how this turned out. And seriously, y'all, my head is already starting to sweat in this beanie. So I'm probably going to take it off and hope that I don't get any makeup on it. But yeah, fitted beanie tutorial will be coming out very, very soon. Keep your eyes peeled. And I'm absolutely loving this colorway that I chose. So yeah, this is another thing I got done in the month of December. And this other beanie was made in the exact same way, except I did make this a little bit larger for Jordan. This was one of his Christmas gifts. He's just been telling me he wants to wear a lot more of like my crochet items. And you know, me being a creator, how can I not wanna make something for him? So last minute before Christmas, I did choose to make him another Lion Brand thick and quick wool ease chunky number six yarn and i just kind of use like this really gorgeous olive green forest green color but yeah this was made with the same exact pattern it's just a little bit taller because he's got a bigger head than me but you know i got a small ass head so we're just working for what we got here even jordan was telling me that this beanie is so much thicker and chunkier than the previous beanies that i made for him like a year ago so we're just updating our wardrobe with more crochet goodness. I feel like there's not too much else I can say about these beanies, but one thing I do want to note with the Lion Brand Thick and Quick Chunky Yarn is that because it's so thick and chunky, I actually worked up this entire beanie in just under two hours. But yeah, I'm not kidding you guys, two hours to finish up a very chunky beanie. Thank you Lion Brand for making a number six yarn because I'm not trying to spend eight hours making a beanie. I'm trying to, you know, knock these out in a timely manner. And let's move on to one of the last few things that I did make in the month of December. When I posted these over onto my Instagram, y'all freaking lost your minds. Can I get a drum roll please? I made two balaclavas and I'm actually so impressed by myself with how they turned out. And again, believe it or not, these balaclavas took me about three and a half hours to finish up. Honestly, they only took me that long because I was trying to get the pattern right the first time around. And then once I got it simplified, this thing really only took me about three hours at most. And I freaking love the colors on this thing. I did not think I was gonna like balaclavas this much, but after I just started seeing a bunch of different creators on Instagram making knitted and crochet balaclavas, I was like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I need it! And once I put it on, I look a little bit like an astronaut, but at the same time, I love it. I love the look of it. And yes, guys, I almost forgot to mention, but I did just post a crochet balaclava tutorial on my channel just a few days ago. So again, up top here somewhere, if you guys wanna go check it out, support your girl, learn how to make a cute little balaclava hat. But in all reality, these balaclavas are actually very simple to make once you kind of get the basis of it down. So as you guys can see here, I just started off with a simple ribbed band that wrapped the full length of my neck. And then from there, I just worked three or four rows in the round with double crochets. And then once I got to the face portion, the sizing really just kind of depends on how much of your face that you want to show. But I just decided to have kind of an average to normal loose fitting balaclava. So I think I just left about 12 or 14 stitches open in the middle of my face. And then at that point, after I marked off those 14 stitches, I was just working all along the backside for like 11 or 12 rows, again with the double crochet. And then the hardest part, honestly, of the whole balaclava is just stitching your rows from one panel to the other. So again, I'm just working double crochets all along the top of my balaclava. And then once you get to the very back of your hat here and you have to connect it, I just added a few rows with some decreases and then slip stitched the back of my hat to the back panel. And then I get this super cute balaclava. This thing actually looks really cute underneath hoodies and crew necks like this, where the hat kind of just sticks out just a little bit. But the last thing I just want to know about the balaclava was that I did go in and attach my yarn to the center face area. And I also just added like two or three rows of just regular single crochet. That way your hat just looks a little bit more finished and there's not a lot of these like raw edges right here. So I really like this little finishing touch just to the face area of the hat. But this yarn seriously blew my mind. It's been sitting on my shelf 
for about four or five months and I didn't know what I was gonna use it with. And then last minute, I didn't really wanna to run to the store to pick out a new yarn for a hat. So I just grabbed this yarn off the shelf, but this is the Craftsmart Jack Hard Yarns in the colorway Rainbow, I believe. Um, these colors are honestly so gorgeous. I didn't think it was gonna work up this cute. But there's like a lot of cream. It almost looks like a little bit speckled or heathered, some orange, red, and then these gorgeous teal colors. You guys know teal is like my favorite color. So once this whole bad boy is completed, Jordan and I, of course, did head outside to do product shots. And I'm honestly surprised how many of you guys here fell in love with the balaclava. I didn't know you guys were gonna jump on it that bad, but I also understand the hype. And of course, this was the very first balaclava that I whipped up. To be honest with you guys, I can't really remember what yarn I used for this, but I'm pretty sure it was an impeccable yarns speck or fleck type of yarn but obviously the entire balaclava is like black and then you got these neon pops of color and now that this diy is finally out i cannot wait to see the recreations that you guys come up with you guys are always really smart and crafty with your color choices and your yarn choices and i can't wait to see all the different designs and techniques that you guys pull from just a simple hat like this. So if you guys do choose to make the balaclava, go ahead, tag me on Instagram, DM me, show me your photos. I would love to support your work back on my channel. And now that I have all of my creations out of the way, I just wanna say a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video again. I first started using Skillshare in October because I wanted to advance my personal business. But recently I've been noticing a ton of lifestyle and personal growth classes that have been added. And one of the first lifestyle classes that really spoke to me is by Chris Griffin, Plants at Home, Uplift Your Spirit and Your Space. And throughout this class, the plant queen talks about the positive impact of plants in your home, how to find and pick out the perfect plant for you, and of course, how to care and listen to your plant. Because I work from home on the daily, I really needed help learning how to uplift my personal space as well as create a calm and serene surrounding. And after I brought my wonderful Millie back home, I headed over to the Plant Queen's video just to learn how to take care of my plant babies and ensure that she's going to thrive. Skillshare has honestly helped me to improve so many different aspects of my life, ranging from marketing my small business all the way to decorating my workspace. And this is what I truly enjoy about Skillshare. They have useful classes for everyone. You just have to start looking today. And like always, the first 1,000 people to click my link down below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you guys can start exploring your creativity today. All right, and for the rest of this video, I kind of just wanted to take a few minutes to go over some of the upcoming projects that I have planned for the beginning of January and all of 2022. So you guys know that I have a massive list of things that I want to make, but first and foremost, the first project that I'm gonna start working on in January is, yes guys, you've guessed it. It's finally time to start making the patchwork cardigan. And I cannot wait to get into this huge bag. I've been saving all of you guys' patches in this very clean trash bag here because there are so many. I don't know any other way to store them. So these have kind of just been sitting on my couch staying in bird's eye view, staring at me, staring me down for like the last two months. And I know you guys have been dying, asking me all the time, when are you gonna start making that tutorial? When are you gonna put that video out? And I'm just so happy to finally tell you guys that I will start working on this patchwork this upcoming week. So I get to dump all of these patches out onto the floor, count exactly how many I have received in the mail. And yes, this is all of the patches, it's crazy. I feel like this bag is like 10 pounds. Can you guys believe 10 pounds of yarn? Look at all these, I can't even hold this bag up. Look how many patches are in here. I'm literally about to break the bag, it's so heavy. So yeah, I'm really happy to start getting into the patchwork project. Y'all just look, it's a freaking mushroom. It's so cute, one of my favorites by far. And at this point, it's pretty safe to say that I do have enough patches to make that cardigan that I was talking about. So once I finish assembling that entire cardigan, I know that I'm gonna have at least double that left over. And like I've told you guys in previous videos, I do want to make a bunch of different items to give away to all of the people that contributed and just other people here on my channel. 
So, so here's my game plan. At first I was kind of thinking about making other cardigans or crop tops or skirts, but because all of these giveaway items will be given to people at random, I don't want to make different size clothing not knowing who they're going to go to. So I think I have decided that I'm going to stick to tote bags and maybe even scarves. That way whoever receives the giveaway item can get some use out of it and they're not limited to just whatever size I made. And that whole giveaway tote bag video will be separate from the cardigan one because I know it's gonna end up taking me forever to get it done. So yeah, that's project number one for January. There were a few other things that I've really been wanting to make and I just kind of kept putting it off because it was the end of the year and I was really busy and swamped. But something else that I plan to put together in 2022 is of course that super cropped cardigan. Y'all have been DMing me, emailing me, Instagramming me, texting me, blowing me up over that cropped cardigan. And I'm sorry, but I promise it is coming in 2022. I already have the yarn for that sitting on my shelf. So once I get this patchwork cardigan giveaway all finished and sorted out, I will jump onto that cropped cardigan because it's still really cold where I live and I'm pretty sure it will be in those chilly temperatures for at least the next two months. So that cropped cardigan will come in handy. And I think it'll also come out in a really good time for like spring as well. What else was on my to-do list? Oh, I've been telling y'all that I wanna start getting into some crochet home decor. So that's a big thing that I do have planned throughout all of 2022. But I think I do just wanna start off with some very basic and simple items like some crochet decorative pillows, whether that's for your couch or your bed. And I feel like with these pillows, there's so many different ways that you could spruce up the pattern, spruce up the colors that you choose to put into your pillow. So if you guys would like a very simple, modern, chic type of pillow, you can go all white all cream and keep the pattern very basic. But if you guys are like me and you have a lot of colorful scrap yarn, you're probably gonna end up throwing together like 10 different colors into one pillow. So that's home decor project number one. Something else that I also wanna put together for home decor is kind of like a pot cover or like a pot cozy. So as you guys probably know at this point, I do have a new potted plant. Her name is Millie and I love her and she's cute. And recently I have been looking to getting some more potted plants for my house just to kind of spruce up my home and uplift my spirits when I'm working from home. So I do wanna create some like pot cozies or pot covers. And especially I wanna make hanging pot covers just so that you know crochet is taking over my home and so once I get those plants kind of settled into their homes I would love to decorate all of their pots with some really cute chic modern looking plant covers and I think that's a really cute way to spruce up your home as well just kind of have hanging plants around your house with these gorgeous crochet covers. I mean, honestly, anything covered in crochet is kind of like my vibe. So if there's something else that you guys would like to see me make here on my channel, whether it's home decor, clothing, accessories, please let me know down in the comments. It's 2022. I need to start putting out some new tutorials for you guys, stepping it up and making some unique one of a kind things. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love just being able to sit down and talk to you guys. And thank you guys for always coming back to my channel time and time again and being so kind and sweet and loving. And I will be seeing you all in January. Bye.